Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. A new studio with a huge chunk of former Battlefield developers has finally revealed its first game, Arc Raiders, and it looks fantastic. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's break down everything we know about the upcoming game from Embark Studios and point out a couple of neat things that I noticed in the game trailer. All right, first things first, Arc Raiders is a third person free-to-play cooperative PvE experience. At first glance, that might seem like a bit outside of the comfort zone for a bunch of former Battlefield developers, but it's obvious they've taken team play and elevated it to a new level. That is great to see. Let's talk about the plot here for a moment. Much remains unknown about the game's setting, but apparently it takes place on Earth. It's here that struggling survivors try to fend off mechanical enemies called Ark that descend from space. Presumably, they are responsible for the apparent apocalypse. The survivors are called Raiders, and they're just doing their best to try to keep the enemies at bay. It's not immediately clear when Ark Raiders takes place, but there is some serious 80s influence in the game's art direction. You can feel it in the colors, the analog video transitions, music, and even in the logo text. In the game, the tech you can spot is straight out of an 80s action movie. We do know that you will be scavenging the ruins of the past, presumably for gear and other things, so the world of Ark Raiders might be an alternate timeline from the Cold War, perhaps even the space race. In the trailer, you can spot a couple of things that may be important to the plot. You can see the words Formica and Trecase here. These might be references to locations, factions, etc. There's also a pug right here, but I don't think he's particularly important to the game's plot. Meanwhile, Embark has revealed a couple of key characters for the game. The main character in the trailer is named Celeste. She's the leader of the Raiders, and her bio is available on the game's website. It reads, quote, Uprooted and abandoned, Celeste lost everything to Ark. Yet she picked herself up, built a new home, and forged a new family of diverse and skillful resistance fighters. That's us, the Raiders. Celeste knows she can count on us every time enemies drop from orbit. It's just too bad that we can't count on her when it's her turn to restock inventories." End quote. Another character in the trailer is a humanoid robot called Lance. According to Embark, quote, "...once you've watched Lance craft a better weapon from the scraps of a defeated roller bot, there is no doubt that he's one of us. As a resistance fighter, he has the same target on his back as any of the other raiders defending our home from Ark." He can't hide the fact that he's a droid, and we have to give him credit for trying to fit in, even though his efforts often land him in strange territory. His boxing matches with Ben Welder? Not so great, but his fashion show? Epic. At least, that's how some of us remember it." End quote. As for the enemies, the trailer gives us a taste of who will be fighting in Ark Raiders. One of them is called the Rollerbot. This is the robot ball seen in the game's first teaser. The website's description shows it's heavily armed and moves in packs. On the plus side, if you kill it, you can use its scraps to craft better weapons. The voiceover in the trailer reveals a sort of hierarchy with the Ark enemies based partially on medieval royalty, so we heard things like kings, queens, and barons. We actually get a look at a baron in the trailer gameplay, that is, the big walking spider robot. And if you've been following the game from the beginning, you might remember this robot learned to walk completely through the power of AI learning. So its movements here are probably, can't guarantee this because I haven't played the game, I don't know, but I would say they are probably organic, and that is likely the case for most of the enemies in this game. The flying enemies respond in a very natural way as they're hit, and meanwhile, I'm curious if this big boy is an Ark King. Embark's AI tech should result in unique combat and a huge boost to replayability. Combat in Ark Raiders is geared heavily towards teamwork. You'll have to work together to take down some of these massive enemies like the Baron. If you take a close look at the battle, you'll notice weak spots and also a few gadgets. Players can target some kind of tank here which, when destroyed, blows off one of the Baron's legs. 
We can also see what is called a snap hook in action. According to the game, you can use these to scale ledges or ridges, or you can even attach it to a smaller bot and play tug of war. I noticed in the gameplay you might even be able to tether enemies to the ground. That's kind of what looks like what is happening right here. Meanwhile, according to the game's website, players can work together to operate a gigantic howitzer cannon. And that sounds like a pretty unique piece of gameplay. Destruction appears to feature heavily in the trailer. We're not sure to what extent, but developers did say that players will have to use the environment and physics to take down enemies. And I can imagine you, you know, pulling a building on top of a, a spider robot or something like that. That's hardly new territory for Battlefield players. For proper weapons, players have access to things like launchers and what looks like a submachine gun, automatic rifles, sniper rifles, and grenades. You'll also be able to use jump pads, though it's not clear if those can be deployed or if they are already kind of part of the environment. From the looks of it, you'll be exploring the landscape with a squad of three players, but you will apparently be able to hit some targets with multiple squads. In the trailer, Embark made a point to showcase nighttime combat. I think this is interesting. I don't think it's been confirmed by the developers for the game, but they have run some tech demos up to this point with dynamic lighting and day-night cycles. So something to keep an eye on there. Environments in Ark Raiders, I think, will also be massive. In the past, Embark devs built an environment measuring 250 square kilometers in size in just three weeks, thanks to their focus on AI in the game development process. But perhaps the biggest takeaway from Ark Raiders' reveal announcement was that Embark is gunning for a multi-platform release. It's due out in 2022 across the Epic Game Store, Steam, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and even NVIDIA's GeForce Now. I recently tried that last one and was actually really blown away by how well it works. And what does this mean? This means that Arc Raiders has the potential to get quite prolific quite quickly. Uh, we don't know if there is any kind of cross-play yet for the multiplayer, so something to keep an eye out as well. I think the success of Embark's Arc Raiders really depends on its free-to-play model and if the studio can effectively deliver a fun game that players are willing to support in the long term. I will definitely say that Arc Raiders has grabbed my interest and I am 100% looking forward to seeing more from the crew at Embark. Uh, if you want to stay up to date, the game has a Twitter handle at Arc Raiders and you can also visit arcraiders.com for the latest game info. I'm curious what you make of Arc Raiders though. Make sure to tell me your thoughts, your opinion in the comments. Is this looking like something you might be interested in, you might want to play? Let me know down below. I will be keeping an eye on Arc Raiders, so make sure if you're interested that you subscribe, tap the bell to get notifications on future videos, and don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, if not a dislike. And if you want to support the channel, keep your money, share this video. As always, thanks for watching.